Mr. Nevi to the Senate. Word is, head of the Senate Intelligence Committee is planning to read a classified document at a public hearing. Okay, and you want me to tell him that he can't? I want you to tell him that he's an engorged ball sack who should walk into an airplane propeller. Yes, sir. You mean tell him that figuratively? No, I don't. After graduating from law school, Owen Hendricks, a 24-year-old young lawyer, joins the CIA, aiming to face challenges and keep himself occupied from the thoughts of his dad's tragic death and his mother's ongoing struggles with mental health. On the third day of his new job, Owen is called by Walter Nyland, Owen's boss and the CIA's general counsel, and sent to the Senate to stop the head of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Senator Smoot, from reading a classified document at a public hearing. Although Owen manages to pull off the job, his ordering demeanor initiates a rivalry with Smoot. Returning to the office, naive Owen meets his co-workers, Violet and Kitchens. Taking advantage of Owen as a fresh officer, they put him on a gray mail, letters from people threatening to expose classified information. While going through these letters, Owen comes across a warning from a former CIA asset, Maxine Maladze, aka Max, who is detained in Phoenix prison for the murder of a truck driver. She wants the CIA to get her out of jail, or she will spill agency secrets on Selby Shaw and P.W. Butcher. Upon doing some research, Owen learns that P.W. is the country code for Belarus and Butcher is a code name for an operation in 2009. Moreover, Selby Shaw is the pseudonym for an officer named Don Gilbane, who operated in Belarus at the time. With Nyland's approval, Owen visits Don Gilbane at an agency black site in Yemen to verify if Max was an asset. After learning that Max really was a valuable asset who had serious connections inside Russian intelligence, Owen returns home and meets Max in prison. It turns out that Max has classified CIA documents about top secret operations in Belarus and Russia, involving incredibly high-ranked people. In exchange for Max's release from prison, Owen gets the location of the documents, but it turns out that it is only a bag full of cash. While retrieving the bag, he is attacked by some cartel members, making him determined to solve the case. After learning about Max's handler, not Bob, Owen leaves the prison, hides the money bag, and returns to the office to give a report on what had happened. It turns out that not Bob, a legend inside the agency, ran the most dangerous ops in history and retired as a division chief. However, the shocking thing about this is that assets like Max shouldn't know their case officers' real names and internal nicknames. While Owen still thinks of Max as a murderer and criminal, it is revealed that Max almost lost her life spying for the US. In the present day, Max is shanked by an assassin sent by the cartel, since they want their money back. Hearing about the incident, Owen visits her in prison, where he learns they must negotiate a truce with the cartel. As Max can't do it in prison, she needs Owen to prepare an agreement with Talco, one of his attackers. In order to continue the investigation with Max, he follows her instructions, but ends up getting abducted by Talco. Owen has no choice but to surrender the money bag. After a few days of research, Owen finally finds out about a case officer named Xander, who worked with Max in Belarus. Before heading to Vienna to meet Xander, Owen takes Amelia's help to make Max's case go federal, so he can drop the murder charges against her, so she can be released and the CIA secrets kept in the dark. But his colleague, Amelia, wants a romantic relationship in exchange for the favor, to which he reluctantly agrees. During his meeting with Xander, Owen realizes that he knows something after he slips up on whether he had met Max. Even though he is the guy who instructed Max to leave Belarus after her assassination was planned, 
Xander is still adamant about not knowing her much. Moreover, he claims that Max was empowered to run her own network of agency assets, which means she knows the identities of most, if not all, of the American spies in Russia and Belarus. After the meeting, Owen makes his way back to the airport only to get attacked by two assailants, who follow him until he jumps off a bridge. After getting out of the water, Owen calls Max. When she inquires about the progress of completion of her demands, Owen unfolds how she will be transferred into a federal facility after tomorrow's hearing. Meanwhile, Owen also had to deal with Senator Smoot, who has subpoenaed him for his earlier behavior in the Senate. The only way to get out of this situation is to give Smoot the requested dirt on Nyland, which is enough to destroy his boss. After the hearing, Max is finally granted permission to be moved to a federal facility, where she meets Cora, a woman who in the past took refuge in one of Max's paid safe houses to lay low from the FBI. However, back then, things got out of control when Cora had a man over, a truck driver named Salvatore, and also the father of a girl whom Owen coincidentally befriended back in a hotel. When the man had left Cora wounded, Max called 911 to rescue her. Max then followed Salvatore and ended up killing him. Although Max tried to leave him alone after a punch, the man's actions and brutal assault on her compelled her to finish him, leading to Max being locked up in prison. In the present, Max finally learns about the person whom Owen met in Vienna. It seems like Xander had somehow betrayed Max, propelling her to leave her country and take refuge in the US. Back in the CIA office, Owen is approached by Don Gilbane, the officer from Yemen. It turns out that operations want to insert Max back into the Russian mob in Belarus as an asset, and for this, she needs to be released clean, adding more complexity to the case. Things get worse when Owen learns that an eyewitness named Danny Woodrow saw Max brutally killing the truck driver. While attending an elite party with his ex-girlfriend and roommate, Hannah Owen gives Smoot quite an impression about his fake high contacts, leading to Smoot backing off for the moment. In order to prevent Danny from going into witness protection, Owen masterfully poses as a court official. He convinces him to record the testimony he is supposed to give at the court, unaware of the fact that Max has sent an assassin to kill the witness. Owen peacefully records the testimony until he is interrupted by a shooting spree. However, Using quick thinking skills, Owen manages to escape with the witness, but the sudden attack hurts him to his very core. Infuriated, Owen confronts Max and tells her he won't see or help her again. While Max is released that night, Don and Xander are secretly plotting something. Max is then taken to her home by some local officers, but she manages to escape through a hidden passageway. Meanwhile, Owen is called by Kevin Mills, aka Not Bob, now the chief of staff to the US president, who wants to know how his nickname got leaked to an asset. Kevin claims that Max is not his asset, which means someone inside the agency fed her his internal nickname. Just when Owen thinks he is out of danger, he is again submerged in the risks of Max's case by Kevin and Don, who holds Owen responsible for Max's escape. Owen's trials are far from over, as he receives a call from Max, who wants his assistance selling her safe house business to Talco. This way, she can pay for her safe passage back into the Russian mob, whom recently had a secret meeting with the Chinese, a matter of great importance to the CIA. While Owen unwillingly heads to Phoenix on Nyland's order, Don has a spy shadow him. In the hotel, Owen has quite a weird time with Max, as he is compelled to buy her a luxury suite and watch her seductive behavior throughout his stay. When Owen inquires about why she called him, Max responds that he is the only person she has been able to count on. During the stay, Max reveals how she became an asset to the agency when a CIA officer leveraged compromising material against her in revealing that they knew she had killed her husband and falsely accused another local gang of his death. Before the duo is about to leave for their meeting with Talco, 
Owen finally catches Max lying about not Bob being her handler. After Owen insists, she finally unfolds that Xander was the one who once spitted out the name while drunk. Later, the duo heads to the secret location, from where Tauco takes Owen to have a meeting with the cartel leader, Sandoval Luna. In exchange for Max's safe house business and being involved in her operation in Eastern Europe, Luna is willing to give her $7 million, to which Owen agrees. While Max is then taken to the CIA office for vetting, Owen visits his friends, Terrence and Hannah, and apologizes to Hannah for using her credit card for the hotel suite. After Hannah accepts his apologies, Owen visits Kevin, aka Not Bob, and informs him about Xander revealing his nickname to the asset. When Max passes her vetting process by consuming tranquilizers, Don urges Nyland for Owen to do a polygraph test, considering that he and Max have grown close and he may have been compromised. Although Nyland trusts Owen, he has no legal reason not to accept Don's demands. Don's accusations that Owen is sleeping with Max are proved wrong, when the lie detector shows Owen is telling the truth. Not only did Owen pass the polygraph, but he also managed to stay on Don's reinsertion operation of Max. Considering Owen's doubts about Don's loyalty, Nyland sends him with Max for proof and later assigns Kitchens and Violet to also follow Owen. While having $7 million, Max and Owen need an additional $3 million to make her way into the mob. However, this can only happen if they manage to get access to her Swiss bank accounts that were blocked as part of Western sanctions against Russian accounts. With Owen's roommate Terence's help, they finally get away to unfreeze Max's bank account in Geneva. While Owen, Max, and the newest addition to the operation, Xander, arrive in Geneva, Don prepares for the mission in Germany. Max and Owen's troubles are far from over, as Max finds herself grappling not only with Xander's sly ways, but also an informant dispatched by Kirill, a notorious mafia boss. They then get into bigger trouble when Owen realizes that he has messed up the time difference between Switzerland and the United States, as Owen has already attempted to access Max's account six hours before its sanctioned time. The account gets flagged, which means it can't be unfrozen anymore. This leaves Max no choice but to use her safety deposit box, which has proof that Xander slept with Kirill's wife. And ever since Kirill knew about his wife's affairs, he desperately wanted to know the man's identity. Owen and Max then arrange a meeting with Kirill to give him the photographs in exchange for money to be sent directly to Lev Orlov's bank account, the man that can grant Max access into the Russian mob. With his secret revealed, Xander is killed by Nishka, a Russian mafia enforcer who tried to hit on Owen earlier in the bar. However, Max believes that Xander was killed too soon after his exposure and that they were actually Nishka's target. In the meantime, a worried Hannah learns about Owen's presence in Geneva, so she books a flight to the country and takes Terence with her. While the cops are investigating Xander's death, Owen and Max are running away from the site. The CIA director then arranges an online meeting and wants to know why his officer was killed. Otherwise, he will stop the operation. The following day, Max informs Dawn about her whereabouts, while Hannah decides to stay in Geneva until she sees Owen alive. After they throw Xander's death on retribution by the Russian mafia, the team continues with the op, planning for their next meeting with Lev in Prague. During the meeting with Lev, Everything seems to go as planned until Nishka arrives with armed men, who go in, guns blazing. Seeing the danger, Owen intervenes and to save Max's life, kills two men, igniting in him a fire of hatred towards his job and decisions he had to make. After killing Lev, since she realized Lev would never trust her, Max escapes the area, with Owen in tow. He regrets his decision to save Max, and decides to leave the op and quit the CIA altogether. Suddenly, he gets a call from Hannah, who is in Prague, after getting his location from Violet. However, before the two can meet, Owen gets abducted by the Russian mafia. Regaining consciousness, he finds himself in the same room as Max, who is also strapped to a chair. When Nishka then enters the room, Max is shocked 
as the young enforcer is none other than Max's daughter, Carolina. Surprising everyone, Carolina shoots Max in cold blood and asks Owen why he was running around with her mother. Who are you? And what the fuck are you doing running around with my mother? <laughs> 